Hello, um, my name is Donna Williams and I am uh, going to show you some of my little sculptures on my website which is donnawilliams.net and I've done uh, sculptures which are anything from life size, so bigger than me, down to very small ones. So the smallest of my little bronze sculptures is this guy. He's called the Prisoner. So um, he sits on a rock. <laughs> and he's actually imprisoning himself so I I did this pretty much to uh, as an expression of the way that we disable ourselves that we can uh, side with our challenges or we can try to overcome them and so the prisoner is a reminder um, of that choice and that we have that choice uh, we may not be able to get rid of the challenges that we have, but we can maximize the strengths that we do have and we can uh, stretch the limits of all the, the obstacles that we assume uh, you know, that, that we're faced with and sometimes surprise ourselves. This one here is called Exposure Anxiety. So she um, I made her to sort of show, I guess, the, the feelings, um, the kind of body language associated with, uh, exposure anxiety, which is a kind of anxiety compulsive disorder, um, which involves involuntary avoidance, diversion and retaliation responses. So. Uh, the person may want to really do something, like they may really want to say hello, but instead they've walked out the room, they may really uh, need the toilet, but instead will be compelled to hold on and avoid avoid it all day. They may really you know, like a certain food, but they will insist that they, they, they don't want it. Um, they may be really hot and really want to take a jumper off, but unable to um, follow through with that and so divert into a whole lot of other things that are not relevant to them but be unable to stop themselves from those diversions. And with exposure anxiety it's a situation where one of the the problems is that as soon as you notice other people are noticing what you think and feel you're compelled to avoid, divert, retaliate in self-protection. So but it's, it's sort of developed so early and um, that by the time you become consciously aware of it it's really hard to turn it around because you can't even tell anybody what's going on because you go into avoidance, diversion, retaliation, communications when you try to explain what's happening for you. So it's a really challenging kind of thing to have. I This one here is called it's called Daring to Dare and it's another one about I guess about exposure anxiety but it's also a reminder about this this idea that oh I've got this phobia or I've got this problem I couldn't possibly but even if you have those issues you can still dare to dare and so this for me is um, a reminder that that philosophically you know we still we still have that choice. We can still dare to dare. We can build up that power within us of daring ourselves to at least take that risk, that small step, stretch those muscles. And it, you know, muscles are not just physical, it's also emotionally what we're capable of. Uh, it's psychologically what we feel we can withstand. It's about information processing, it's cognitively how much information do we feel we could keep up with. It's stretching your abilities, stretching your attention span, stretching your endurance, stretching your assumptions, stretching um, uh, tolerance, um, stretching your own identity, your belief of who you are and what you're capable of. So if you think that you know you there's nobody intelligent in there, do you dare to dare find out if that's true? 
if you are say quite meaning deaf and you have non don't have functional speech can you dare to dare to practice your way towards uh, towards the use of functional speech if you fear uh, expression and joining the world can you dare to dare yourself towards uh, tolerating your connection with that world and the exposure that will come you know of self that will come with that uh, that exposure before others that exposure of you to your own mind when you don't want to know that you exist when you are dissociating and trying to disappear or lose yourself in a pattern do you dare to dare to stay present this one here is called simply being this was another um, I guess really important concept for me simply being is the ability to be in the company of uh, of another person or an animal or a, a plant or a tree or just the wind or the rain but simply being means that you're in parallel you're not fixating on that other person or animal or whatever object you're not watching waiting wanting you're simply being you are self-owning you're being in your own space you can model things so you can model the things that you want that other person to be able to learn from but you don't make it overt and in their face hey look at this i want you to do this hey come and look at me be part of the world yeah yeah exposure exposure exposures over here oh good boy good for you let me give you some praise let me wave the flags because surely don't you look like you're so rewarded by having attention 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 well some people feel like they're going to be sick from attention they want to rip their skin off from attention the only time they want it is when other people are running away so just like the dog never gets enough attention the cat um, uh, the cat is the opposite the more you ignore the cat often the more the cat will come and uh, demand your attention and simply being is a really great way to motivate cat people uh, to come and chase the world people who are imprisoned in involuntary self-protection responses if they get around someone who's really good at simply being they'll start to open up and explore and stop self-protecting and there are some approaches that are much more about simply being and, and which is very indirectly confrontational and then there are approaches that are very in the person's face and they're quite controlling and they have quite an agenda and they uh, they're, they're in a sense actually flag waving all the time you are withdrawing and I will pursue you you are withdrawing and I will pursue you you are withdrawing I will pursue you and it's this just cat dog cat dog cat dog cat dog and some people will uh, you know come out of that they'll realize oh okay these people are relentless and and I will comply some will come and join the world and say oh the world wasn't as scary as I imagined once I got the skills it wasn't that bad and some will actually become much worse become traumatized by that constant social claustrophobia and the reinforcement that the world is overwhelming and invasive and will not allow you your own space your own individuality uh, your own mind your own pace um, and in fact children uh, generally start out being in their own space um, and indirectly confrontational they start out being little people who are self chattering playing in their own space then they go to a playground and when they're three maybe even up to five sometimes as old as seven years old they're still chattering to themselves and they're playing in their own space around each other they're not yet doing the push-pull hierarchy look at me what about you nya, nya, you know um, compete compete watch wait want and I think adults don't necessarily get that and they project that onto uh, children and think that a lot of invasion is surely okay just keep pursuing and being in their face and trying to 
uh, relentlessly um, force them to engage directly with other people's worlds but sometimes we unravel and open up more because we're not invaded and because we're given that sense of time and space it doesn't mean you sit around doing nothing simply being is a very uh, it's a very strong presence and uh, um, you can you can be simply being because you're out there jumping on the trampoline you can be simply being because you're um, you know you're you're making word patterns on a bunch of uh, tiles you can be simply being because you're reading a book you can be simply being because you're your storytelling out loud to yourself it can be dynamic it doesn't have to mean you're just silent just sitting but that's simply being as well we pay people a lot of money to help us relax and sometimes just being around someone who's good at simply being is a really relaxing thing especially if you deal with like mood anxiety compulsive disorders there's nothing so therapeutic as being around someone who is really good at simply being. This is called fixation. And so he kind of looks like he's, he's, uh, he's very fixated on something and uh, yeah, some of you would have guessed. <laughs> uh, and I saw a lot of this, I guess, as an autism consultant. Um, so a lot of, um, a lot of adults who had really significant, um, meaning deafness, meaning blindness, or speech aphasia, who didn't have a lot of receptive or expressive communication or both. Um, and they also often could find that they could get rid of people pretty easy <laughs> by just um, getting involved with themselves. <laughs> and uh, so I sort of wanted to capture the humor of that uh, is a bit of an in-joke. It's like, excuse me, I understand not not what you're doing in that sense but uh the use of it and the way that it does uh you can use it to make people just get out of here get away from me um you know you don't, do you do you really want to hold my hand now <laughs> um yeah so i saw it i saw a lot of um uh people who use that uh strategy some kids and adults who use that strategy uh as a social control tool as a, a way to tune the world out as a way to reinforce that their life still belonged to them uh, particularly when they were in really socially invasive programs and they would then reward themselves reassure themselves that they still had their own world and when pretty much everything else had been cashed in on the one thing that <laughs> often the workers hadn't cashed in on was was that so I can understand it. I think that um, that's sort of sociologically interesting. Yeah, I think the way that human beings, the soul, tries to retain whatever power we still have over our own autonomy. Um, we have so many packages being sold to people for, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, bring these professionals around to invade every centimeter of, the, of a person's life you know uh, and, and I'm not sure that we remember uh, all the time the importance of of that person's soul um, we think that we're pursuing uh, you know we think that we're saving their soul and uh, I think that the integrity of a person's own wor world is also really uh, important and the ability to uh, to at least consider that respect that integrity is a kind of important thing you know it's a balance if you spend all your time in your own world you're not going to develop if you are constantly pursued and nobody lets you go into your own world you you might ultimately get uh, pretty agitated and uh, divided and then you ha you're at risk of, of, I guess, mental health stuff happening. So it's a balance. And that one reminds me about balance. This is called Tickled. So I love movement, which you can see. So movement really um, 
really matters to me. I am face blind and um, I grew up mostly meaning deaf until late childhood and I was fairly meaning blind so I saw my world in bits, I saw objects in bits, I saw the world around me in bits, faces, bodies. So um, the ability to feel a figure as a whole really matters and I really tuned into movement because um, things like uh, standard body language or standard facial expression didn't really uh, work for me but these little nuances did so I guess that's what what you see when you you see people in bits I guess you learn all those little funky nuances so that's uh, that's Mr. Tickle he's a bit tickle. and uh, this one here is called Bliss and uh, he's not actually a devil <laughs> people think he's like a devil he's not actually a devil um, it's more like a Bacchus, he's a, like a celebration of um, the, the ability to indulge, to, um, uh, to take what you need from life, uh, to, to eat, <laughs> to join in. Um, yeah, and I think with exposure anxiety, he's kind of the opposite. So when you have uh, somebody like this, um, they're, they're really keeping the world out and everything is very, you know, very small doses and it's all, you know, it's all too overwhelming. Where well, this one is the, really the complete opposite. It's like, yeah, well, bring it on. What's next kind of thing. So I guess that's my, um, my balance of those. What, what that experience is like and um, and trying to feel more relaxed about it because I had a lot of self-deprivation compulsion stuff including I was never very switched on about food um, I got a lot better and uh, you know the exposure anxiety is much less which is great it's good to have reached a point where I can embrace life and connection and communication uh, without going into compulsive avoidance, diversion, retaliation responses. This one is the last one I'll show you. It's um, actually made of wax. So the others were bronze and this one is a wax one and he's called Not Now. And I guess, uh, again, that influence of exposure anxiety is very much present in, in the sort of movements that um, that feeling of, um, I don't know, containment, uh, wanting to manage the invasion of the outside world, yeah, to limit it to retain the integrity of one's own world. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching the sculptures. Thank you.